In this video, you're going to learn the process for dividing a four-digit whole number by a two-digit divisor. Now, before we start, let's go over some of the keywords that are going to help us when we're dividing. First, what is dividing? Dividing can be equal sharing or equal grouping. Equal sharing is when we have some quantity and we need to divide it equally between a group of people or a group of entities. For example, I've got a bag of candy and I'm going to share it all equally with four of my friends. That's equal sharing. You can also do division with equal grouping. That's when I say, I'm going to take this huge bag of candy and make giveaway bags with three pieces of candy each. So in every single bag, I'm putting the same amount. I'm making equal groups. That's equal grouping. So we know that division can be equal sharing and equal grouping. The good news is, when we're doing the math, the arithmetic for division, it doesn't really matter which one it is. When we apply that math to real life, that's what gives our answers meaning, whether they're equal sharing or equal grouping division problems. Now let's go over a couple more terms in division. When we start a division problem, we begin with the dividend. That's usually the bigger number for right now. We divide it by the divisor, which is either the number of people we're giving those candies out to or the number of candies that go in each little bag. And our answer is the quotient. That's the mystery we've been trying to solve. When our quotient, when our uh, dividend doesn't divide evenly into the divisor, the quotient will also have a remainder. A remainder is an extra leftover piece, and we abbreviate that R. So now let's try an example to practice the division process. Divide to find the quotient. In this problem, we're going to divide 9,307 by the number 12. We should all know our 12s times tables, so that should be pretty easy for us. Before we start the DMSCB, or Does McDonald's Sell Cheeseburgers uh, method, we're going to do some predictions. So first, I remember that the big number goes inside the house. So when I see this number written as 9,307 divided by 12, I know to put the 9,307 in the house because that's the first number, okay? Now I'm gonna predict, how many digits do we think we're going to have in the quotient? Well, I look at the dividend, it's four digits long, and I'm dividing by a two-digit number. I know that two-digit number cannot possibly fit into our first digit here. I look at the first two digits, 93, well that's certainly bigger than 12. So I predict that our quotient should have three digits because we know that the first time that divisor is going to fit into our dividend is in that second digit of the dividend. Next I'm going to predict, do I think I'll have a remainder? Well, I was looking at this problem and I noticed that 9,307 is an odd number and our divisor is an even number. That makes me think that 12 is not going to fit evenly into 9,307. So I predict we will have a remainder. Now, finally, I want to make a little symbol to remember the relationship between division and multiplication. When I divide this number by this number, it's the same as if I had multiplied this number by my quotient to get the first number, okay? Division and multiplication are inverse operations. Now that we've done a lot of thinking to predict, we are ready to divide. When we divide, the first thing we're gonna do is divide. How many times does 12 go into nine? Well, it doesn't, so we put an X. How many times does 12 go into 93? It goes in seven times. Now I multiply. Seven times 12 is 84. Next step, subtract. 93 minus 84 is nine. Next step, check. Is nine smaller than 12? Yes, that's really good. If my difference here is smaller than my divisor, that means I'm ready to go. If it's too big, I probably need to check my division and multiplication. Now that we've checked, we're ready to bring down. I bring down the next digit. Notice how I make sure to align all of my work by place value. That's gonna make this a lot easier. Now I divide again. We finish the whole system, go back up to divide. How many times does 12 fit into 90? It fits seven times, now I multiply. Seven times 12 is 84, now I subtract. 90 minus 84 is six, 
Okay, now it's time to check. Is six smaller than 12? Is what's left over, once I've done that division, smaller than the number I'm actually dividing by? Yes, that means I'm ready to go. Remember, if that number's too big, we need to check our division or check our multiplication. Finally, okay, so now it's time to bring down that seven for this number 67. And since we brought down, whoop, we start all over again. Let's divide. How many times does 12 fit into 67? It fits in five times. And now I multiply. Five times 12 is 60. Ready to subtract. 67 minus 60 is seven. Now I check, is this number smaller than 12? Yes, seven is definitely smaller than 12. So I would think it's time to bring down, but there's no more numbers to bring down. Well, in this case, since we're giving our quotients with remainders, instead of dividing into the decimal, we are all done. All we have to do is designate this seven as the remainder by writing R7. So now we have made a prediction, we've gone through the whole dividing process, and the only thing left for us to do is check our answer, okay? So I've made a couple of checks here to see if 9,307 divided by 12 is really 775 remainder seven, okay? So first I need to check, does it have a remainder? Remember, we predicted that this number would have a remainder because we noticed that our dividend was odd and our divisor was even, and we thought that maybe it wouldn't go in evenly. Well, let me check. The remainder is seven. It does have a remainder. So that's good. That fit my prediction, and I'll give that a check. Next, I'm checking to see if it has three digits. Seven, seven, five. Yep, that's three digits. Remember, I thought it would have three digits because when I looked at the dividend and the divisor, I noticed that the first time 12 was going to fit into this number was into the digits 9-3, into 93. So I thought that 100 space was going to be the first place we filled. It turned out our prediction was correct. There are three digits in the divisor. Next, we're going to estimate and see if that makes sense. I've rounded 9,307 to 9,000. I've rounded 12 down to 10, and I've rounded 775 remainder seven to 800. 9,000 divided by 10 is about 800. That's not too far off. I think that's reasonable, so we'll give that a check. And finally, we remember that multiplication and division are inverse operations. So if I wanna super duper check my answer, I can always work backwards. Instead of doing 9,300 divided by 12 equals 775, I'm gonna go backwards. 775 times 12 plus that remainder seven, that leftover, should equal 9,307. Believe you me, I did the math and it all checks out. Students, this is how you can understand the terms related to division, follow the division process by making a prediction, using the pattern, and then checking your work to solve four digit divided by two digit problems easily. Okay, check that out and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks so much for tuning in today.